Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to episode 41 of my SPSS tutorial videos here on YouTube. Welcome back. And this is the second episode of three episodes about clustering. Because as you can see on your screen right now, we've got a data set and we've got 30 respondents. And those respondents are ranked on anxiety, depression and attention deficit disorder. Uh, and they are ranked between 1 and 100, with 1 being very low and 100 being very high. So if you score a 1 on anxiety, you don't have any anxiety at all. While if you score a 100 on ADD, that means you've got a lot of ADD. But there are probably clusters in this data set. So that means that people who have similar answers can be grouped together. And a way to uh, identify these clusters is by using the higher, <laughs> it's a difficult word for me to pronounce, hierarchical uh, cluster method. Last episode, we took a look at the two-step cluster method, which I think is a little bit better than this one because it, it provides way more information. Uh, but today we're gonna look at the hierarchical version. Uh, and then in the next and in the last episode, we'll discuss the uh, k-means uh, k uh, uh, version. But today we're gonna have a look at analyze, classify, and then hierarchical cluster. And then the variables we're going to select is going to be anxiety, depression, and ADD. At statistics, we're going to select a single solution. And we don't know yet how many clusters it might be. So we can select three, for example, because I think that there will be three clusters in this uh, data set. But we don't know, of course. Then we press continue. Then we press plots. And then we select, of course, the, no, not of course, but we select the dendrogram. This is the most important graph we're going to take a look at. So select dendro, dendrogram. Uh, with methods, we're going to select the wards method. First of all, it normally is on between groups linkage, but we're going to select wards methods because wards method tries to make the, uh, cluster groups which are equally big, at least tries to. So it uh, avoids that one cluster exists of only five respondents and the other uh, cluster exists of 20 respondents. That wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't be ideal. So Ward's method tries to e create equal size of clusters. Then we press continue. Uh, save, we do not press yet because we don't know how many clusters there are going to be. And then we press paste. And then if you go to your syntax screen, then now there's a code for the cluster. So you select the code and press the big green play button. And then on, in your output screen, the new cluster analysis opens. And we're actually gonna ignore the case processing summary. We're gonna ignore the agglomeration schedule and we're gonna uh, ignore the cluster membership and uh, also the number of clusters by case. But what we're gonna take a look at today is the dendro dendrogram using words linkage. And if we double click it, then you get the full, uh, you get the, if you double click on it, a new window opens and you get the full, uh, the full dendrogram, which you can now see on the screen. And this is going to help us determine how many, uh, how many, uh, uh, clusters where there eventually are. And we can see that there are lots of small clusters, lots of small clusters, that there are four well, slightly bigger clusters, and that there are two very big clusters. And we want to know which of those we should use. Should we, should we go for 30 uh, clusters? Well, how many clusters would this be? I think about 20 or so. Should we go for 20 clusters, really small ones? Or should we go for four medium ones? Or should we go for two larger ones? And this can actually be answered pretty easily. And that is by looking at the length of the horizontal lines. So, for example, the horizontal lines of all the small clusters is relatively small. It's only one centimeter. The line of the medium clusters, the horizontal line, is also one centimeter in this case. And about two centimeters over here in this case. So it's also relatively small. While the horizontal lines of the two clusters is really, 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 really large. So by far, far larger. So therefore we can conclude from the dendrogram that we're gonna use two clusters. So the cluster analysis has shown us that there are two clusters. Uh, one over here and one over here. 
Okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to close this, uh, this, uh, this output screen and we're going to do another analysis and we go to analyze, classify and then uh, hierarchical cluster again. But this time it's the statistics. We want to select single solution and the number of clusters is going to be two because we just figured out it is two clusters. Plots and methods we leave as this, but this time we press save. And then with the single solution, the number of clusters we're going to select is going to be two. So we press continue, we press paste, and then if we go to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, <laughs> syntax screen, you select the code and press the big green play button. And if we then take a look at the data set, we can see that there's a new variable, which we're going to call cluster. Whoa which we're going to call cluster. Now we have a new cluster variable, which uh, for every respondent shows in which cluster they are, whether they're in cluster one or in cluster two. And this shows this for all the further respondents. Okay, so this is one method in which you can see, uh, which you can use to determine the amount of clusters and to uh, link the respondents to those clusters. But I do want to say that this hierarchical uh, method is not the best one. Uh, you're better off using the, uh, the two step, uh, the two step version, which I explained in the last episode, because it uh, gives a lot more information. Uh, it gives a lot more graphs, etc. Or you can use the K means version, but I'm going to do that in next episode. For now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If, you, uh, if this video was helpful to you in any way, shape or form, then please leave a like and more important, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I want to make BuzzPSS grow as much as possible so every single subscription counts. And for now, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Ciao.